Dear all, Namaste. Today, I shall be discussing about Ludwig's angina. This is defined as rapidly progressing polymicrobial cellulitis of submanuvular space that can result in life-threatening airway compromise. The term angina means strangling sensation or crushing pain, severe pain. So, Ludwig's angina also leads to severe pain and feeling of strangling sensation of the throat. The patient dies because of respiratory compromise. In the past, the mortality due to Ludwig's angina was very high, around 50% before the element of antibiotics. Even nowadays, around 8-10% to of individuals die because of Ludwig's angina. Mostly, people from remote areas take long time to come to hospitals. During the presentation, they are very serious and there will be respiratory compromise which leads to death, more than septicemia. In this picture, you can see the infection of submanual space which is divided by myocardial head muscle into sublingual space, superiority and the submanual space, inferiority. The superior space gets infection from the incisors and premolars. However, the inferior space gets infection from the molar teeth, starting from the first, second, third molar, which lie below the mandibular line. So the infection can spread from one space to another also, and the tongue is pushed posteriorly, that leads to respiratory collapse and the person dies because of respiratory obstruction. Most common predisposing factors for Ludwig's angina are dental or periodontal infections, accounting for around 80% of the infections. Poor dental hygiene leading to carious and abscess tooth is the most common one. Sometimes tooth extraction also leads to Ludwig's angina, especially lower molars and premolars that lead to infection of the inferior space, that is submaxillary space. Others like upper respiratory infections, floor of mouth trauma, mandibular fractures, cellulitis, peritone strapsis, and IV drug abuse also are risk factors for development of Ludwig's angina. In comorbid conditions like diabetes mellitus, malnutrition, alcoholism, neutropenia, lipus erythematosus, epileptic anemia, and glomerulonephritis, the infection can spread very fast. So infection can spread rapidly to involve the submandibular space. The most common causative organism is group A, beta hemorrhagic strugus organism like strugus pyogenes, most common one, followed by alpha hemorrhagic strugal infections like strugus viridans and strugus pneumoniae, staphylococcus aureus, fusobacterium, bacterial species like melanogenicus and oralis also may lead to endocrine infection in the floor of mouth. Likewise, peptoestrugus, actinomycosis, nisirae species also may lead to infection of floor of mouth that spreads to the neck. Occasionally, pseudomonas species E. coli and neonatal infections are also made to disease formation. So, this infection is composed of both gram positive and gram negative as well as endopic infections. So, this is very putrid infection. During incision and drainage, the pause is foul smelling due to endopic infection of floor of mouth and oral cavity. What are the clinical features? The infection is found mostly in young adults because of infections, dental caries, dental infections, and IV drug abusers. The pain may start in any involved teeth with severe tender localized swelling in submanual region. The patient cannot swallow properly. There will be drooling of saliva due to dysphagia. There shall be halitosis due to infection of floor of mouth by endopic organisms. Pus may come in the oral cavity also. Trismus due to involvement of muscles of floor of mouth or pterygoid muscles. Strider from lens edema and elevation of posterior tongue against the palate. In the previous picture, I think I had seen the tongue was pushed posteriorly that leads to stator also or stutter. The patient may be toxic, the patient may have fever, there may be chills and tachycardia due to toxicity and dehydration. The patient cannot take orally. On palpation, there will be board like firmness of floor of mouth and brownie induration of the suprahyoid soft tissues because of cellulitis and pus formation there. The infection leads to area of compromise within hours and patient may die because of respiratory compromise. In this picture you can see Ludwig's angina. This is the infection of floor of mouth going deep towards the neck and going to the neck leading to deep facial infections. This mimics necrotizing fasciitis. You can see there is erythema and swelling of the submental region and going to submental region also. There is edema here, swelling here and that is going down also, spreading cellulitis. In children, the infection of oral cavity or nose also may lead to inflammation of the submanual space, which is rapidly progressing, and this is in adult. Grudinsky has given certain criteria for diagnosing Ludwig's angina. They are 
rapid spreading cell like this with no specific tendency to form abscess. Therefore, in many cases, we may not find the abscess initially. The abscess will form after some time. First, there will be cellulitis that will be rapidly progressive. The inflammation should involve both sub-axillary and sublingual spaces, usually bilaterally. The infection may spread from one angle of the mandible to the other and down to the neck. The infection spreads by direct extension along the facial planes and not through the lymphatics. This is rapidly spreading polymicrocellulitis extending to different facial planes directly. The important fact is there should be involvement of muscle and fascia but not the submandibular gland or lymph nodes. Therefore, submandibular cellulitis may not be counted as lurex angina. The infection should spread from the oral cavity and it should descend down through different fascia. The infection should originate in the submaxillary space with progression to involve the sublingual space and floor of the mouth. So infection can be vice versa, start from the floor of mouth to downwards or can spread from the submaxillary space to upwards, usually due to a dental caries. So in many patients with lurex angina, we have to look for dental caries if they have infection of the incisors, canine or the molars and premolars. The most common infection source being the molar infection. How to investigate a case of lurex angina? Suppose if the case presents to you, you have to perform routine blood investigations to find out if the patient is in sepsis or not. If pus is there in the oral cavity or pus can be drained from the oral cavity, we have to send the pus for gram stain and culture. In the past, plain radiographs were used to assess the degree of soft tissue swelling and urea compromise. But nowadays, due to the advent of CT scan, they are not commonly performed. CT scan is the most useful imaging tool, preferably with contrast. So it shows the inflammation, shows abscess, shows the areas where the pus has been collected or there is a spread of infection from one space to another space. The infection can spread to different spaces so you can find out all these things with the help of CT scan. So at present, CT scan is the most useful imaging tool for investigation of lurex angina how to find out its spread in different planes how to treat the infection once you diagnose the lurex angina you have to frequently assess the patient to assess the risk of progression and airway compromise patient does not take orally there will be dehydration and patient requires IV fluids for adequate rehydration oral hygiene with the help of antiseptic mouthwash is very important the infection can be stopped to some extent with the use of antiseptic mouthwashes like betadine mouthwash before the antibiotic sensitivity result comes, we have to use empirical therapy with high dose intravenous antibiotics, broad spectrum, like cefriexime, gentamicin, metronidazole to cover gram positive, gram negative, plus endemic infections together. If there is any known predisposing factor, we have to treat that. Suppose patient may have diabetes mellitus, may have anemia, so we have to treat those conditions together along with primary treatment. Even if the patient is not having any pus in the oral cavity or in the neck, there will be transudate. So you have to give adequate respiratory support by doing incision and drainage, maybe intraoral or external. Intraoral drainage can be done from the dental area. If you can extract the tooth, the infection, the pus comes out through the tooth socket or the pus can come out through the floor of mouth also. The external drainage is made from the transport incision across the midline from one angle of mandible to the other. I had told previously. The infection may spread from one angle of mandible to the other. The infection spreads to both the areas. Even if it starts from one area, muscles of the tongue are opened vertically and the mild height muscle is sectioned longitudinally as you could see in the previous picture and drains are placed in all facial spaces. The infection can spread to different spaces so we have to keep drains in different areas for the pus to come out. It is not like simple IND and trichostomy is Perform to maintain an airway wherever the patient is in respiratory arrest or respiratory stress or respiratory distress. You can see the incision being made to drain the reason then here with a small incision for small abscess. The pus is coming out through the incision here. This is the pus and drains are being kept in multiple spaces, multiple areas and the patient has been tracheostomized and this is the incision you will make from one angle of jaw to the other. Even with best treatment, there is high chance of mortality. Therefore, when the patient is having respiratory distress, always just open the abscess and do triggers to me for airway compromise to be resolved. If you like my video, please subscribe my channel. You can see many videos like this in my channel. Thank you.